Mr. Preston seemed even more anxious than usual. At first I thought he just needed to use a toilet. But Mr. Silton explained that their old gang members lived around here. Somehow the money went missing when we robbed that post office, he continued. For some reason they thought we'd taken it, but, as he put it, why would we live in such a dump if we had a load of money? Although this clarified things for me, it certainly didn't calm Mr. Preston, who suggested we gotta move on. Don't worry, we'll be a matter of minutes, we just need to send Mr. Chips up there to have a look, said Mr. Silton as he pointed to a window high up the building. Go on, he said with a smile, off you go then. The man didn't look like a thief. But maybe his striped jumper was in the wash. Mr. Silton was certain he'd stolen the van though. So I watched for a moment. But then I heard Mr. Silton climbing up. I was going to speak. But Mr. Silton held a finger up to his lips. He looked incredibly serious for a moment. One swift movement. And we were inside. Mr. Silton whispered that I was to go one way while he went another. Why are you whispering? I asked him. Where are we going? Find the keys to my van Robocop, said Mr. Silton through gritted teeth. Mr. Silton said we should split up, so I thought it best to go the other way. The piles of junk were all wired into the mains, I suppose it was a good deterrent against thieves.
I didn't know which key I should take, so I took all of them. I finally managed to collect all of the keys. As soon as I heard the gunshot, I knew I needed to go back and find Mr. Silton.
The old man was pointing an even older gun right at Mr. Silton's face. But the man looked terrified when he saw me. I can still picture his hand shaking as he reloaded his ancient firearm. This wasn't the plan, shouted Mr. Silton. It's him or me. Let him have it. I didn't know what I was going to do when I caught the old man. But I knew I had to stop him. If someone dared hurt my friends, they would have to pay. I kept turning the events over in my mind. Could I have handled things differently? Could I save Mr. Silton without hurting that man? Mr. Preston could see I was upset, and said music was a good alternative to facing up to problems. Come with me, he insisted, I'm going to teach you how to play drums. First, he said, just play the bass drum along with me. We'll see how good your timing is.
Mr. Silton was patched up, but still pretty angry. He referred to the man as a word that wasn't in my dictionary file. It should have been between cunny and cup. I reminded Mr. Silton about going to find the others now we had the van. But he said there was something even more important we had to do first. Mr. Silton explained that it was a good idea that Mr. Logan be released from prison early, and that this wouldn't involve a parole board, but might involve dynamite. Straight away I was apprehensive. I thought only bad people went to prison, I knew Mr. Logan was the guitarist in Mr. Silton's band, but why would we help a bad person? In the end, I think it's only Mrs. Silton's smile that convinced me to help. Mrs. Silton promised to have a present for us when we got back. She said she'd been saving her money from her decorating job. I didn't know what I would need money for, but then realized, if nothing else, new games consoles must be out. Be careful, said Mrs. Silton with a big smile. Don't rob any post offices, and don't get shot. In the dead of night, it was surprisingly easy to get close to the prison building. Mr. Silton said it was like the Death Star and had a weakness we could exploit. Although I seem to remember the robot getting shot when they did that in the film. But there was no time to worry as Mr. Silton pressed a walkie-talkie into my hand and said, Good luck. 